This camera, the Canon EOS R, just sold on eBay. I had it up last night, I listed it last night, and it sold this morning 30 minutes ago. So that's how I know that people are still attracted to this camera and people still are looking to buy a camera like this. And I have some information that somebody out there, at least one person can benefit from. So today I wanna show y'all the settings that I use with the Canon EOS R vlogging and my cinematic settings that I use on short films, music videos, things of that nature. And to show y'all that this camera, no matter what year it is, is still usable. What? I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you something. <laughs> we don't care. All right, I'm gonna make this part of the video fairly quick. I'm not gonna go over every setting within the EOS R, just the things that I use for my work. So we're gonna start with my music videos, short films, things of that nature. So first thing is I choose between my C1M, which is my manual settings, or C2M. C1M is what I use for my music videos, short films, things of that nature. And then C2 is anything that's not gonna be shot in C-Log, which is my behind the scenes content or any like just short content that I wanna get out really quick. I don't need to shoot and see log or worry about shooting in 4K. And once you get everything dialed into what you want, you can also go in and save the custom settings you set to each of these right here or whichever ones you want to set it to. So if you were to go into your settings, your menu, and then you can go all the way to custom shooting mode and you can register settings so i just have mine for c1 and c2 i don't even know what c3 is i don't think i have anything set for c3 but once again c2 is for my vlogs behind the scenes stuff anything that's not going to be shot in c-log and then c1 is going to be my main work music videos short films anything that's going to be shot in c-log if you hit the q set that's just your quick settings for my autofocus, I typically shoot with right in the middle, which is how it is right here. You can move it around with the touch of the screen. And I have my settings for my customized buttons. My right arrow is going to be for my autofocus to get back to the center. Just to show y'all real quick so I can get it out the way. If you go into your menu. So once again, I have my custom settings for my menu. Full menu, the down, the down button, down arrow. If you scroll all the way over to here, and then let's go to customize buttons. I'll let y'all copy this. Don't worry about the things that's for photo. Um, just worry about the things that's for the video side. So I'm gonna go through these real quick and y'all can copy this stuff down. through the quick settings real quick. I typically shoot 4K or 1080p, but just know when you shoot 4K on this camera, there is a massive 1.8 times crop, which is pretty significant if you aren't using like a wide angle lens. If you want a wide shot, I would suggest not shooting in 4K unless you have a wide enough angle to compensate for that crop, but it's not that big of a deal. Either I'm shooting in 4K and just want to accept the crop or I'm going to shoot and just regular 1080p all eye for 24 frames per second or I'll shoot all eye HD uh, 60 frames per second. There is no 4K 60 on this camera. You might be able to get 4K 60 if you record externally to an external monitor. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. I never use the digital image stabilization. It's kind of trash, honestly, from the things that I've seen. Uh, you can try to use it, but I never really needed it. So I just kept mine disabled. My white balance typically shot just 5200 Kelvin. You can go in and change like the different settings within it. You can change the color temperature as well. But 
52 to like 56 is what I would typically shoot, but it depends on what you're shooting and what you want for the look. All right, so let's dive into the full settings. And your info button is gonna quickly get through the different tabs. And then once you're inside the tab you want, you can hit the arrow button to go through and keep going through. And obviously your up and down arrow is gonna navigate through as well. Record quality is gonna depend on what you want. I shoot all out because all out is gonna be your best quality within the EOS R. If you wanted to shoot like 120, which I think is only in 720p, which is not that bad. And there's no autofocus just to let you know. But if you wanted to shoot that, you have to enable the high frame rate. But I only use that a couple times. But um, I usually keep it on 4K if you want to deal with that crop. Or you can go down to HD all I to have the actual full frame of the camera. Canon log setting. So this is what I use for C log. You do have the option to shoot in 10 bit, but you have to do that with an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja or something that has the ability to record externally on a monitor. If I keep my view assist on, that pretty much is going to be your Rec. 709 look while shooting in the Ashy C-Log. So I keep that turned on and then this is what I use the Cinema EOS Original for the color matrix and I don't touch any of this stuff. I just keep it as as it was within the camera so those are my c-log settings i would say if you shot with the r6 c-log 3 is really good on that camera and i think that is a 10-bit camera there's a big significance in how the colors look in my opinion but you can get some good colors out of the eos r when shooting in 8-bit and shooting regular c-log it looks good i think it looks good <laughs> Those are the main things that are going to honestly affect your image. At least it did for me. You got other things in here that you can like deep dive into, you know, your peaking settings. If you're shooting uh, like manual focus and you want to like see what's in focus, you can change the color of it, the levels and everything. You can turn it off if you want to or keep it on. I kept mine on because when I am shooting in manual, I want to see what's in focus just to help me out. Let's go into uh, what I use for my vlogs. So I'm gonna hit the little mode button up here and then I can navigate to C2M. So this is what I use for my vlogs behind the scenes stuff. Quick settings, let's go to I'm typically just going to keep it right in the middle. That's just easier for me. I want to shoot 24 frames, 23.98, same as 24. All lie. If I want slow motion like B-roll, I want to shoot 60. Digital IS turned off yet again. I typically keep this at auto white balance for my vlogs. It's, it's, it's a vlog, so sometimes I don't really care. But um, sometimes I will go in and I'll just shoot at 5200 Kelvin for my white balance. but nine times out of ten just to be auto white balance i shoot neutral for my vlogs it's not a flat log image but it does give you some flexibility in post if you are trying to do some stuff like that you know add some colors back into it so i can just take note of how i have my settings for my neutral since this is a vlog uh, picture profile is going to be neutral. Canon log settings are going to be turned off. I'm not going to be shooting a log while doing a vlog. That's just too much work. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the settings within the Canon EOS R.
know that some of y'all are thinking, if this camera, the EOS R, is such a good camera, why am I selling it? I have the FX30, that's my main camera now, so I want to fully switch back to Sony. No shade against Canon, the FX30 was just a better camera for the things that I do, and so I want to replace this with another Sony camera, just because I want everything to be the same ecosystem. It just makes it easier for me and the workflow that I do. So I'm gonna replace this with the A6700, most likely that or the Sony ZV-E1. That's it though, man. I'm gonna get up out of here. Don't sleep on the Canon EOS R. Still a great camera to be using for whatever you may be doing.